In today's tale, we hear about the story where the hero of Kavach came to the aid of concerned citizens. Within the Imperial City, a group of ordinary people have organized themselves to become the region's leading defenders against creatures of the night. With leads to follow and no combat abilities, the group looks to the hero for a chance at performing the outlying duties. Through twists and turns, followed by deceit and backstabbing, the tale progresses with the Order making a staggering discovery and the hero faced with grave danger. This fable surrounds the quest titled, Order of the Virtuous Blood. At this point in their adventures, the hero has found themselves with a high level of fame. Their noble deeds and actions precede them in most places they go. Lingering around the Imperial City Temple District, perhaps visiting the Temple of the One, or simply strolling around the city, the hero is approached by a stranger. A dark elf woman named Ralsa Norvalo gains their attention and seemingly delivers an important message. Pardon me. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I was sent to ask for your help. Where are my manners? I'm Ross of Norvalo. My husband, Gillen, has requested that I find you and ask if you'd assist him. Normally, I wouldn't approach a total stranger like this, but Gillen seemed so insistent. Please forgive my audacity. Thank you. Gillen always tends to exaggerate, but in this case he sounded earnest, which worries me a bit. He said to tell you that the matter he needs help with is of the utmost importance to the citizens of the Imperial City. You're to meet him at Serador's house, which is located in the Temple District. He said all will be explained when you get there. That's all he told me to say. Thank you. I'm sure he'll be pleased. I must go now. Good day to you. Intrigued yet cautious, the hero decides to make way for the house belonging to the individual named Serider. A short walk across the temple district sees them standing in front of the wooden door to the domain. Entering inside, the hero is greeted by a tall high elf and standing beside him is a dark elf clad in a full suit of armor with sheathed weapons. The high elf has this to say. It's an honor to finally meet you. When I heard you were in town, I just had to send for your help. Your reputation precedes you. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Serador. Likewise, sorry to send Gillen's wife to get you in that manner, but it seems safer if we weren't seen on the streets right now. If you'll come with me. Splendid. Watch your step. Even more intrigued and equally as cautious as before, the hero hesitantly follows Serider down to the basement. Upon going down there, the hero notices two more individuals, yet another dark elf, this time in commoner clothing, and an Argonian dressed casually as well. Strung up on the walls are red banners with blood drops in the middle. Chairs, candles, and tables are lined up along the perimeter. Serider turns to the hero and begins speaking yet again. Welcome. You are now in the sanctuary of the Order of the Virtuous Blood. Few outside our circle have ever set foot in our hallowed hall. We are, for lack of a better word, defenders. We guard the city from an infestation that plagues it. We are vampire hunters. I'm sure you are familiar with these despicable beings, feeding on the innocent as if they were cattle. Well, this group was formed to combat them. Alas, we are but three old men, not able to match the fighting prowess of a vampire. We lack the strength to defeat them in battle. Our goal is to root out the vampires that live in our fair city. So far, we've been unsuccessful finding one, until now. It's come to the Order's attention that Temple District resident Roland Jenserik is a vampire and has already claimed one victim. That's where you come in. We want you to slay this vampire and cleanse the city of his filth before he can feed or kill again. A few nights ago, I was roaming the city as I often do, looking for any signs of a vampire. As I headed past Roland's house, I heard a cry. 
I rushed into the back garden to find Roland struggling with a woman he'd been courting. I tried to intervene, but he was too strong. He threw his lover to the ground and turned his attention on me. Luckily, I managed to run back into the street and escape his grasp. I hid for a while and then returned to the garden. Roland was gone and the woman was dead. She had two puncture marks on the nape of her neck. That's when I realized he was a vampire. The Order needs you to track him and destroy him. I would start by searching his home. He hasn't been there for days, so it should be safe. Return to us here if you have questions. We meet at night. In trying to aid concerned and endangered citizens, the hero agrees to search for Roland Jinseric, the accused vampire. Roland lives straight across from Serator in the Temple District, and the Order of the Virtuous Blood claims that they have not seen him home in several days. Before leaving to investigate, the hero makes the acquaintance of the other members. Gillen, the Dark Elf, offers fairly run-of-the-mill advice with the hero possessing that knowledge already. In a similar fashion, Greythroat, the Argonian, also mentions common details about vampires in which the hero has likely already seen firsthand. Ending a conversation with both of them will see the hero being told that vampires are clever and deceitful creatures. The hero now exits Serador's house and heads for Roland's. The hero heads across the street and faces down Roland Jinseric's door. The way through is locked at an average level and is considered trespassing if seen. Finding their way into the house, the environment is still and ominous. Searching through the house, it seems empty and void of any life. Placed in front of the manor, on the set and illuminated table, is a note titled, Love Letter from Relfina. The letter reads, My dearest Roland, I cannot wait for you to return from Breville. My heart swells with joy as I know we will once again soon be together. I yearn for you every night that I look beside me in my bed and you are not there. How I wish I could have taken the journey with you, but I understand that these are dangerous times and I would only slow you down. When you return, perhaps we should get away from the chaos of the Imperial City. Let's go back to that cabin in the woods. The one where you said we would always be safe from the world. The one where you took me in your arms and sang songs of moonlight and happiness. The one where you said I love you. Hurry my love, Relfina. To think of the tragedy and heartbreak that unfolded. An innocent woman in love with a man who mercilessly took her life in order to feed. The hero sets course for the aforementioned cabin in hopes of finding Roland and bringing him to justice. The cabin is located east of the Imperial City and west of Shadenhall, being at about less than half a day's ride away. Arriving at the cabin, the hero flounces up to the door and enters inside. Here, they find a neat and tidy setup, with a double bed near the corner and a roaring fire placed at its hearth. More importantly, the hero lays eyes on the man who killed Relfina, Roland Jenseric. The Breton approaches and says this. Go away. I know what you're here for. Just leave me alone. Vampires? Why would you ask me about those filthy creatures? That bastard. Seri Dodez accused me of being a vampire. Me? Ha! Ah, he's the one who is the vampire. I can't believe him. I knew he would try and pin this on me. If only I could get my hands on him. I... I'm sorry. I've been hiding up here in this cabin and I forgot my manners. Try and understand. I loved her. I'd never harm her. Ralphina was the love of my life. For the first time I had a positive outlook. Then I saw Seridor looking at her with those coveting eyes. When she started taking walks in the garden at night, I became suspicious. I didn't want to lose her. I should have trusted her. Oh, Relfina. Yes, I must let someone else know. That night, I decided to follow Relfina. I wanted to see where she went on her walks. When she stopped in the garden and Serida stepped out of the shadows, my heart sank. And suddenly he was upon her. She seemed entranced as he wrapped his arms around her and sank his teeth into her neck. 
I burst from my hiding place and attacked Ceridor. He became startled for a moment and tossed Relfina aside. She fell to the ground, and I heard a sickening crack as her head struck a stone. I was no equal to Ceridor. He knocked me down in one quick movement. As I lost consciousness, I saw him laugh and then run away. Now I know why he didn't finish me that night. He wanted to cast suspicions on me instead. I panicked. By the time I awoke, her body was gone. I knew Ceridor was a respected member of the community. They'd never believe he was a vampire. I retreated here to the cabin to collect my thoughts. I suppose you must decide what to do. Are you going to kill me? Thank you. I'm happy you gave me a chance to explain. I know about Ceridor and his secret order. What better way for a vampire to hide than to pretend he hunts them? You may want to speak to Fintius at the first edition bookshop in the market district of the city. I know he goes there occasionally. I doubt that he's told Gillen and Greythroat anything, but you could always try. As you know, the vampire can't remain in sunlight. I'd wager that you'll never see Ceridor outside during that time of day. In a wicked and twisted turn of events, Roland informs the hero that the story told at the Order of the Virtuous Blood was not only a lie, but that Ceridor was the one to attack Relfina and that he is indeed the vampire. In a moment's decision, the hero's intuition rang true and they decided not to kill Roland, and instead to believe him. After all, the words of Gillen and Greythroat kept repeating over and over that vampires are cunning and will live a life full of deceit. The next steps for the hero are to now track down Ceridor and confront him about the whole scenario. As per the advice of Roland, the hero travels back to the Imperial City and heads for the first edition to speak with the shopkeeper, Fintius. Entering the bookstore, they engage in conversation with Fintius about Ceridor. Ceridor? He comes in from time to time. Usually it's when he's out shopping. He always comes in with a large amount of travel food in his bag. Then sometimes he buys a few books. I asked him once about it, and he said that he goes out of the city on business trips. I think I overheard him once mention Memorial Cave to another patron of mine, but he never talked to me about it directly. Yes, it's outside of the Imperial City. I heard it's a place where many of the heroes from past wars are buried. Sort of a subterranean graveyard. I just assumed Ceridor had a relative that died and is buried there. Not many people go out there anymore as the route is dangerous. But Ceridor is a stubborn one. <laughs> Takes integrity for a man to risk his own life to honor the fallen. I admire him for that. I looked it up once in an old atlas I had in stock. Here, let me mark it on your map. Fintius reveals to the hero that Ceridor is a frequent customer at the shop and has even overheard him speak about Memorial Cave quite often. Knowing full well that his little trips to the cave are not to honor the dead, the hero takes inventory of their gear and sets off on the journey to Ceridor's hideout. Memorial Cave is located directly east of the Arcane University, straight across the other side of Lake Rumere. The hero enters the cavern to search for Ceridor in order to seek out answers. Inside, they are met with grisly and gruesome sights. Graves and bodies have been desecrated, disgracing the fallen warriors buried in this once noble ground. Even worse, and perhaps damning evidence against Ceridor, there are several vampires stationed throughout the cave, bloodthirsty and ready to attack the hero. There is only one zone to this dungeon, yet the numbers of the undead horde reach levels to a dozen or higher. The hero's combat abilities take them through each room and walkway, besting and killing off vampires with each swing of their blade. More disturbing and vile sights are seen, including a victim pen where bodies are strung up and held as feeding cattle for the undead. Finally, the hero is able to make it to the final area of Memorial Cave. 
This site sees an abundance of coffins and bodies of the dead mutilated, destroyed, and displayed for show. Standing amongst them at the corner of said area is Seridur himself. The hero slowly approaches, and Seridur has this to say. You fool! Did you really think that I'm surprised to see you here? I let you find me. What better place to get rid of you than all the way out here? No messy bodies left behind. No evidence. I was sloppy last time with Roland's lover, and I won't make the same mistake twice. After I'm through with you, I'll find Roland and finish what I started. I knew hiring you was a mistake, but I had to keep up appearances. The damned order insisted we get you into the picture. I think after I'm done with Roland, Gillen and Greythroat will have to be dealt with. Quite a list of things to do, wouldn't you say? Well, enough of my monologue. Time to feed. In an instant, Seridor begins swinging his weapon at the hero, pressing the attack with the intent to kill. Exhausted and cut up, the hero raises their weapon to take a stand against the cunning and dangerous vampire. Both parties clash and parry, then block and swing. Blow after blow landing on one another, with their armor pieces slowly waning. Finally, with a massive strike, the hero cuts down and deals a fatal hit to Seridor, ending his unholy life. It's at this point the next move is to leave the desecrated grounds at once and return to Roland's cabin to deliver the news. Fleeing the cave and traveling northeast by foot, the hero arrives yet again at Roland Genseric's cabin. Entering inside, they deliver the word on Seridur. I hope you're here to bring me good news. He's dead? Oh, thank goodness. I feared I'd never be able to leave here, or worse, that he would come for me. I can finally return home. The ironic thing is that I think the Order of the Virtuous Blood should continue its work. Perhaps I'll speak to the others. Yes, I think that the Order will live on. Give me time to make arrangements and meet me in Seridor's basement. Let us never speak of that abomination again. Horrid creatures. I hope we never see one in the Imperial City again. Surprisingly, Roland requests to meet at Seridor's former house in the Imperial City, as he believes the Order of the Virtuous Blood should continue its work, even though they have made grave judgments and crucial errors. In one last grand journey, the hero makes their way for the Temple District of the Capital and finds their way back to the dead vampire's domain. They make their way inside of the house and are greeted by Seridor's former bodyguard, who strangely doesn't take up any conflict with the hero. Heading down into the basement, they find Roland, Gillen, and Greythroat congregated together, yet at peace and civil with one another. Roland approaches the hero for one last time and has this to say. It's so good to see you again. I've spent a good deal of time speaking with Gillen and Greythroat. They agree that the Order should live on. Not only that, but we'd like to make you an honorary member. If you're ever in need of our services, we'd be happy to provide them for you. In addition, we'd like to reward you with this enchanted ring. Use it well in the fight. At least there are a few less vampires in the world now. Well done. But there are more of these creatures that still roam Cyrodiil. If any of our books can help you in the cause of destroying more, you're welcome to read them. Since you're an honorary member of the Order, if you bring back proof you've slain a vampire, we'd be glad to compensate you. Bring back the vampire dust from their remains. That should be proof enough. Return to me when you have slain another vampire and the Order will gladly reward you. Roland has taken up the mantle for head of the Order of Virtuous Blood, and all three members agree upon continuing to eliminate any vampiric threats. They gift an enchanted jewelry piece called Ring of Sunfire to the hero, who is also made an honorary member of the Order. Then finally, Roland mentions that if the hero returns with vampire dust as proof of a kill, they will be compensated in gold for their efforts against the undead. And with that, the tale comes to an end. The ending of this quest sees that the Order of the Virtuous Blood was and still is ineffective at doing their job. If not for the hero journeying off to far and wide places and encountering the odd vampire, 
in which their dust can be sold to Roland, the Order practically offers nothing else of service. The Order is unable to identify Jackben, Earl of Imbel, as a vampire. They're also unable to locate the various undead within the city's sewers. During this quest, there's an option that sees the hero killing Roland at his cabin, and the mission ultimately ends there. Serator's true identity is never uncovered, and Roland remains the prime suspect of Relfina's murder. Serator offers the player gold, and then continuously dismisses them upon every interaction. Looking into Serator's affairs, he seemed to have a bodyguard employed with whom the hero and the order would frequently see at his house. However, Sylvan Dolivus, the servant Dark Elf, virtually offers no protection to him during this quest. More than likely, Sylvan was ordered to stay and look after the manor, while Serator ventured off to Memorial Cave for his vampiric needs. Upon Serator's death, Sylvan pledges his allegiances to Roland and claims to now serve him, as he did not know the true nature of his former master. Roland's story can be seen as righteous and heartbreaking, although with the events of it unfolding rather quickly. He begins the story in love with a woman, spending many amazing moments together. Then one night, he sees her being attacked by another man whom he's been suspicious of all along. Intervening the attack sees his lover ending up dead, and him ultimately taking the blame for it. When the true perpetrator has been ousted and dealt with, he is able to return to his normal life. He even decides to take up the mantle for the leader for the Order of Virtuous Blood, seemingly in honor and duty to his lost loved one. Interestingly, piecing together both Roland and Serator's dialogue, an argument can be made that perhaps Relfina was willingly providing her blood to Serator. Roland mentions that Relfina had been going on her walks for some time before he even decided to follow her. He also mentions that Serator has had a coveting look in his eyes for quite a while, fearing the two were secretly in love. It's more efficient for vampires to feed off of living prey whom they can keep alive, and therefore, Relfina would be of no use to Serator if he killed her. In fact, the only reason for her death that night is due to Roland attacking Serator. Amongst the commotion, Rofina's weakened body fell to the ground and her head impacted with a rock, splitting it open and ultimately killing her. Although at this point, the only way to confirm or deny the allegation lies with the slain vampire and the murdered woman, making it impossible to receive a concrete answer. Finally, it's rather peculiar that while Serator claimed to be a vampire and even demonstrated some form of feeding, the telling signs of vampirism are simply absent from the Altmer. Serator's eyes were not red. No matter what stage of vampirism an individual is at, their eyes are always red. Even Janus Hasseldor and Jack Ben, Earl of Imbel, two citizens of the Empire who hide their vampirism quite well, ultimately have red eyes. Interestingly, Serator does not drop vampire dust when he's killed. Almost every other vampire encountered in Cyrodiil has vampire dust that can be looted off of them, but not Serator. What's more, Serator does not take damage while out in the sun, and if led to him, the other vampires in Memorial Cave are more than likely to attack him, as he is not registered in the faction of vampires. Could this be the result of poor development on Serator's character, or is there something more at play? Overall, this quest was likely meant to serve as an introduction of sorts to vampires. Much entry-level information was passed on by the members of the Order to the hero about the condition. The hero also learns that vampires are smart, deceptive, and cunning, with the further notion that they could just as easily be disguised amongst the citizens as was so blatantly seen through this quest.